Okay, so we need to talk about Maxwell's equations, and this is what they look like, and don't freak out, calm down, okay? There's a, a couple of important things here and a lot of things that aren't important, uh, but really in the end we want to look at what is an electromagnetic wave and what does it have to do with Maxwell's equations. So let's start with the review. So here we have, and we've already done this, okay? We have the what's called the Coulomb field. So if I have a positive electric charge, it makes an electric field looks like this. If I have a negative electric charge, it looks like this. But I can calculate the electric field due to single charges. If I have multiple charges, I can do that too. Coulomb field. Then we have this, the magnetic field due to moving charges. In this case, I'm showing a part of an electric current. So I can calculate the magnetic field, and it looks extremely different. Uh, so in this case, we I, I call this the curly magnetic field since it makes these circular patterns around the moving charges. Oh, and also we have this uh, we have this magnetic constant that comes into play a little bit later, but we, you know, that's just in there to calculate the magnetic field, just like we have the electric constant to calculate the value of the electric field due to a charge. So moving charges make curly electric fields, charges make Coulomb, I said that wrong, moving charges make curly magnetic fields, stationary charges make Coulomb electric fields. Now, what if I have a changing magnetic field. This is Faraday's law. We've already talked about this before. But if you look at, if you have a magnetic field that is changing, that makes a curly electric field. Okay, so we, we can make a curly magnetic field with moving charges or a changing magnetic field to make a curly electric field. And so this depends on the idea of flux, uh, where this is product of basically how much magnetic field passes through an area. And then the EMF depends on the rate of change of flux. Faraday's law, we already did that. It turns out that changing electric field also makes a curly magnetic field. Okay, so that, that's kind of symmetric there, and that's important. A changing magnetic field makes a curly electric field. A changing electric field makes a curly magnetic field. Now we have one more rule, and then I'll summarize all these rules. And this one other rule is that there are no magnetic monopoles. So here's a map of a magnetic field due to a bar magnet. It's a dipole. And you get this pattern of field in space. And it doesn't look quite the same as the Coulomb field due to a single electric charge. This looks like the Coulomb field due to two charges. We will never find, well, we have never found a pattern of magnetic field in space that looks just like the electric field due to a point charge. And so that would be a single magnetic monopole would make that, but we, we have never found that. Okay, so now that we've gone through Maxwell's equations, whether you believe it or not, that's true. Okay, so let's, let's review. So the first is Gauss's law. So Gauss's law essentially says that point charges make Coulomb electric fields. Uh, I didn't cover Gauss's law in my class because you have to do a surface integral of flux. And I think that's pretty complicated. I, it's a complicated idea. And it's not super useful, uh, except in this one particular case to talk about Maxwell's equations. Okay, so a lot of classes do cover Gauss's law. Um, I just don't think it's useful. The next is Gauss's law for magnetism. This is the same thing. It deals with uh, magnetic flux over some closed surface. And it says that the magnetic flux over a closed surface is zero because there's no magnetic monopoles that we've found so far, if you watch Big Bang Theory, uh, they were they were looking for magnetic monopoles. We might find them one day. Okay. Uh, Faraday's law says that the changing magnetic flux makes curly electric fields. We've done that one, that one's fine. And then we have this last one, the Ampere-Maxwell law. It says that moving electric charges make curly magnetic fields or changing electric fields make curly magnetic fields. If you wrote these down as equations, it would look like this. On the left side of the screen, we have the integral form of Maxwell's equations. The first one is Gauss's law, then Gauss's law for magnetism, and then we have Faraday's law, and then we have uh, the Ampere-Maxwell law. And on the right are the differential forms uh, that don't deal with a finite amount of space. Uh, and, and I just put these here for completeness. I don't expect you to understand these, but they do look cool. They show up on t-shirts and you should be able to, you know, have some little credibility with your friends. Say, oh, it's Maxwell's equations. Okay. 
Let's look at an example. Here is a region of space, and it has an electric field pointing up and a magnetic field pointing to the right, I mean out of the screen, and it's the, this region is moving to your right at some velocity v. So we have three things, electric field, magnetic field, and velocity. So let's consider the electric field, the yellow arrow. If I look at this from the top, then I have this electric field is moving into this rectangular area that doesn't exist, but I just picked it there anyway. And if I use the Ampere-Maxwell equate law, then that changing electric field in that region changes the flux, and that's going to produce a magnetic field. So the changing electric field in this region makes a magnetic field. That's one of those laws. Okay. Now let's look at the magnetic field. Now we're looking at it from the side here, and you see that, that cyan arrow is the magnetic field. It's also going to move in another triangle, a rectangle right there, and we're going to have a changing magnetic flux. That changing magnetic flux is going to create an electric field, and this is from Faraday's law. So it turns out that that works. I can do that. I can have that changing electric field make a magnetic field, and that changing magnetic field make an electric field in those two square boxes. But this only works for that region of space to move if that box is moving with the speed of light. And you see here, you can actually calculate the speed of light. It depends using the magnetic constant mu naught, the uh, electric constant epsilon naught. If you take this particular expression, you get 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That is the speed of light. Electromagnetic waves are light. And actually, uh, when, when they found this out, when they used these parameters to calculate this coefficient, this speed, they're like, hey, that's the same speed as visible light. And then so someone said, well, maybe, maybe all this other stuff, maybe radio waves are light. Maybe we have other types of waves that are light, and they're all the same thing. And they are all the same thing. So here we have, and I took this picture from NASA, I should have drawn my own, I apologize. Uh, but we have the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation behave differently. For very, very large electromagnetic waves, we call those radio waves, and they can have you know, huge wavelengths, you know, meter, 10 meters, 100 meters. Uh, as you get smaller wavelengths, we have microwaves, and then as you get smaller, we have infrared, visible, uh, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, uh, and, and this is not a to scale diagram of those because you can see here the gamma rays have 10 to the negative 12th meter wavelength, uh, which is so super tiny. Okay, But there's a relationship between the wavelength, the frequency of light, and the speed of light. So the speed of light is C, and this is true for all waves. Lambda is the wavelength, and F is the frequency of light. But you know, we're going to use these ideas to talk about the interaction between light and matter, but that's just your very first introduction to Maxwell's equations and electromagnetic waves. And that's the most important thing. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so I'll end there, and then we'll do some more problems with some cool light stuff in another video, and I'll talk to you guys later.